Hi there, my name is Vic Vera. I'm an ENT consultant working for the NHS in central London. And what I want to do today is give you a very short video about narrow ear canals. What, what I mean by that is that this hole here is just narrower, shorter, smaller than other people's ear canals. And you might think, well, what's the big deal? But people, if you meet someone with a narrow ear canal, they'll go, oh, God, this is awful, oh, I hate it. Because what happens is that their ears get plugged up with wax quite frequently and they have to keep going to see someone or keep putting drops in their ears to avoid this wax and blocking off their ears and so they can't hear anymore. Also, because they don't ventilate their ears very well, it becomes a sort of a wet hole in your head that keeps getting infected and they keep having ear infections that lead to get back and forth from the GP. It's a, it's a, for them, it's a complete blight on their life and they have to keep keeping it clean avoid fungal infections, bacterial infections, it becomes a real stress for them. And because of their ear hole and the ear canal is so narrow, hearing aids are very find it very difficult to amplify noise into your ear. It just doesn't seem to work very well. They don't fit very well either. And I think a lot of people have this problem and a lot of people have difficulty in knowing what to do about it. So what I'm going to do is quickly tell you from an ENT surgeon's point of view what we'd like to do for these people. Now, one of the most common things I see is that people who are slightly older have narrow ear canals because what happens is that uh, the this part of the ear, the, the pinna, this cartilage bit, seems to slip forward a little bit and starts blocking off the end of the ear canal. If you look at this part of your here, just here, that's cartilage. You can actually feel the cartilage just there. And you'll feel that if you pushed it forward, although it's quite painful for me to do, you can push it forward to the point where it's sort of, um, if this is the hole like this, the cartilage can go across like this and start blocking off your ear. And I'll draw a picture of that here. You can see that the cartilage is slipping forward and narrowing your ear canal right at the very end, but that's enough to cause problems throughout the whole ear because air isn't ventilating through, you get wax build up and blockage at that point. And it becomes a, a real hassle for these poor people who are already a bit older, therefore having more trouble with their hearing anyway. It's actually quite an easy operation to do to sort that out. All you do is remove a little bit of that cartilage and bring it back to a sort of more normal level so that the ear hole opens up again. So it's quite simple, quite easy to do. The effect is tremendous on these people because they no longer have to worry about their ears all the time. Oh, I can't go swimming, I don't want to get an infection. Uh, you can't live your life normally. Uh, and you say, oh, I wish I could get a hearing aid that would fit. All those sorts of problems people have, that can all be sorted out. But unfortunately, it's not as easy as that. There are other reasons why you could have a very narrow ear canal. And one of them is having constant, constant infections, which are causing the, the soft tissue within your ear to swell up. So the ear canal skin to swell up almost chronically, constantly swelling up, so it blocks your ear. And sometimes when you have a lot of swelling in your ear, even though the infection has now been treated and gone after maybe years of having an infection in your ear, someone comes around and fixes the infection. Because you've had an infection for such a long time, what you do get is some bony growth in that area as well. So the ear canal is sort of constantly, permanently narrowed because extra bone has grown in that area, making your ear canal very, very narrow and making you liable to having a new infection later on, which starts the whole process all over again. So it's quite difficult to fix these situations because first you need to get rid of the infection. And the second thing you need to do is get rid of this bony growth there, including the soft tissue growth as well. In an operation while the patient's asleep, we move the, um, the soft tissue you want to keep out of the way. You drill down the bone so it becomes normal again. In fact, you keep going to the point where even bigger than normal because you expect there to be a little bit of shrinkage later on. So you make the ear canal nice and wide, then put the skin that you saved back on the ear canal so it all looks relatively normal in a few months' time. When you look in the ear, you go, ah, oh, it's a normal looking ear canal now and you can hear normally, you can use your ear normally and you don't have to worry about your ear anymore. Now there's a third thing I want to talk about which are exostosis and osteomas. Now these are bony outgrowths within your ear canal. You have your ear canal like this and that the canal itself is normal but you get these bony growths that come out into your ear canal and start blocking your ear. An osteoma uh, actually is very different from the other one. So an osteoma is sort of like an extra growth that occurs um, in the suture line. So, so there are joints or junctions within the ear canal 
and it seems to grow in those areas there. So it's like one solitary lump that slowly grows in size and starts filling up the ear canal. And as I said before, all you do is scrape off the skin, drill it back down till it's completely flat, and then put the skin back where it was. Now, exostosis, is, I think, is quite interesting. Exostosis is these sort of polyp-type bones that occur, occur very close to the uh, eardrum. And they tend to occur in people who are cold water swimmers. So you see it an awful lot in, uh, in surfers. It's, you know, um, it's a bit weird, but uh, I read in one book once that the only other animal or mammal that does that is some sort of hooded grey seal or something like that. And what happens is these bony outgrowths grow around their eardrums to protect their eardrums. So when they die very, very deep, like 300 meters, I think, when it gets down to that level, we worry that the eardrum is going to pop because of the pressure of the water pushing on the eardrum. But these bony outgrowths stop that from happening and protect the, I think it's called the grey hoodie. I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I read that book. But once it comes down to that level, it protects it because that bony outgrowth is protecting the ear from being popped open by the deep pressures. Now, I, I'm not saying <laughs> that that happens in humans, but it's, it is odd that the same sort of thing happens to humans who swim in cold water a lot. Like I said, surfers or people who like swimming in lakes and crazy things like that. If you see these things, these the, these outgrowths that occur in um, surfers, they can get so big that they block the ear and cause trouble, infections and hearing loss. And actually, out of all of these things, that's probably the easiest one to deal with because all you have to do is sort of knock them off and, and they actually just almost snap off. Uh, I think normally most of us, what we'll do is we'll, we'll flatten out the, uh, the, the stalk of that uh, exostosis as well so that it flattens out so the skin can grow over it nice and easily. But it's a really simple operation. It, it's quite close to the, uh, the eardrum, so you've got to be a little bit careful you don't damage that. But compared to the other ones, it's... it's Nice and easy, very, very quick to sort out. Anyway, so I hope that's given you some sort of idea of how we deal with narrow ear canals. And I hope you found that useful. Um, I guess take care. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.